and welcome fellow reptile enthusiasts. I'm Dan Torresman with cbreptile.com and today we are doing another installment of our reptile of the week. This week our reptile is the albino inferno leopard gecko and we're going to give you the in and outs on exactly what you're going to need to know about this week's cold-blooded buddy. First off, let's talk about life expectancies and sizes. Leopard geckos can live from about six to 20 years on average, and over the course of that lifespan, they will get the sizes of about seven to 10 inches. Females will get that lower side of seven inches, and then males will grow slightly larger than that to the 10 inch size. While we're on the size factor, we might as well talk about terrariums. Terrariums are going to be different for the different reptiles that you have. For leopard geckos in particular, they're going to need a 10 gallon terrarium for when they're hatchlings as well as juveniles. But as they get to adulthood, you're gonna to wanna to move them up to a 20 gallon tank. And a 20 gallon terrarium isn't going to just to be that 20 gallons. You would wanna get a 20 gallon long as opposed to one of the 20 gallon talls, just because they are going to thrive off of the floor space and not need all of that uh, space in the air. For these terrariums, you're gonna need a few major factors. The first being a heating mat. Heating mats go on the underside of your terrarium and emit heat upwards through the base of it. So your reptile crawling along the floor of your terrarium can get that natural heat that it needs uh, to absorb and regulate its body temperature. Uh, as well as they're going to need a hide above that heating pad so they can choose to have a heated cave effect. They can climb on top of it if they want to stay in the heat, but not necessarily be directly on top of the heat. And they can regulate the temperature uh, based on that, as well as be able to give that safety feature and be in the heat at the same time. We're gonna need a second hide on the opposite end of the terrarium. One side has the heated pad and the other side is gonna have some moss, sort of like what we have right here. Uh, this moss is gonna be drenched in water and then spread around the base to add to the humidity and moisture in your terrarium as well as create that colder side uh, effect that's going to help regulate the temperature as well. You can keep your water bowl on that side too. So when you are rehydrating your moss, you can just spray into your water bowl as well. So it works out really well. Uh, these guys are going to need a light on top of their terrarium uh, to simulate night and day. They don't need the UV spectrum because they are nocturnal creatures. So when you have that light on there, just make sure it's going to be on for 12 hours and then off for 12 hours according to the day and night scheduling. So your leopard gecko can be sure to have that regular cycle. If you wanted to break them a little bit of that nocturnal feature that comes along with these beautiful creatures, you can feed them during the daytime as well as handle them more in the daytime and that might help them. What we're gonna to wanna to talk about is the substrate. We have here a substrate that's going to be a little bit of eco earth. Eco Earth is going to be great for a lot of different reptiles. However, for the leopard gecko, if you're going to be holding them in a terrarium filled with this stuff, it could block up a little of their digestive system, especially if it's going to be rolling around with the crickets, getting caught on the crickets that it will be undoubtedly eating, as well as when they do strike for the cricket, they'll dive right into the dirt, and in that bite, they might pick up some of the substrate as well. They're not very good aimers. So what you wanna do with that is make sure that you have a reptile mat, reptile mat is called cbreptile.com, and it goes along the bottom of your terrarium and lines it like that. So you just pick that up and you can wash that and replace it. You can also use paper towels if you're going to have a semi-permanent home for them and you just need something really quick to make sure that they're not going to be making a mess or make sure that they have a little bit of traction. So now that we covered the ins and outs of your terrarium, a few more steps you're gonna to need to ensure that the terrarium is the best fit for your leopard gecko is to add two different temperature humidity gauges. And one's gonna be for the heat side, let's call it uh, this side of the terrarium, um, and then for the opposite side where we have the moss over here, let's call that the moisture side. So the heating side is going to need to stay about 88 to 92 degrees, and then this moisture side is going to need to stay a little colder and probably staying just around that 73 mark or anywhere a little bit higher than that. You don't wanna to go too much lower than 73 degrees. And that should be in the center around that normal temperature uh, that your home is going to be. So room temperature in the center. So you're obviously gonna to need to feed one of these beautiful creatures. So when it comes to feeding time, uh, they're going to need a few different dietary supplements and that's going to include Reptical. Reptical is a great supplement that's going to give them all the nutrients that they're not gonna get from things like their crickets and their mealworms. Mealworms and crickets are very, very good for them. That's what we feed them here at cbreptile.com. You can feed them about uh, six to eight large crickets for every three days. So make sure you keep that ratio going. And if you're gonna feed them the mealworms, make sure you're only giving them about two or three in that three day period, because they can be a little bit more fattening. Overall, leopard geckos are very simple to care for, and they make great pets for first time reptile enthusiasts. 